This week on a special holiday edition of The Big Show, we will examine the top 10 television shows for 2020. Joining me for the ride for the next hour is going to be Charles Kirkland. Um, and we'll have all that and more on this special episode, episode 433. It doesn't really matter. Something. It's some episodes. One of those episodes. Keep it where you got it. You're listening to Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. Let's go. All right. Welcome to the latest episode, Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. I am Tim Gordon. I think Charles is frozen because he's frozen with a smile. This, this is an amazing look right here. Um, he, Charles, will, I guess he'll snap back at some point, but until he does, I will just chop it up with you guys. Welcome to the show. Uh, we are a week away from Christmas right now. And, um, y- you know, it's just been a long year. Uh, so it, it's my pleasure when we get an opportunity to kind of end the year with these top 10 shows. So all month long, we've had uh, the best Christmas songs that have been on. We featured, um, uh, we did songs, we did Christmas movies, or or the lack thereof of African-American holiday movies. Today, we're gonna be looking at television. Much later on, we're gonna also be looking at the top films of the year. And then who knows, we may actually look at performances, you know, in television and film. So it has been an amazing year. Um, I'm waiting for my brother Charles to log back in, uh, who is on the road. So he's doing the show from a different location today. But hey, it is what it is, man. You just kind of keep it moving, you keep it rolling, and you do what you do. Now, while we're waiting on Charles to come back in, who will be joining me shortly, Um, Also, remember, you can subscribe to our show on YouTube. Uh, We also have a new home at Spreaker.com, and that's spelled uh, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com forward slash film. I always leave off the E-R at the end. Uh, So you can check us out there. Uh, You can always go to the filmgordon.com, where it is the Tim and Charles show. We got all the reviews. Everything is all locked down and covered on the site right now, uh, including the new Wonder Woman review that just went up about an hour ago. Um, Charles, uh, nah. hey, <laughs> leave it alone. Leave it alone. I tried. <laughs> um, so we got reviews. Plus, this Christmas, you remember, we've got uh, One Night in Miami is in theaters or actually streaming. Um, Minari is Minari dropping on Christmas Day? No, actually, Minari I think is coming out in February now. Oh, they mo- they moved it. Okay, um, Sylvie's yeah. Love will be on Amazon Prime on Christmas. Soul is going to be on Disney Plus on Christmas. My Rainy's Black Bottom premiered yesterday on Disney Plus. Midnight Sky will be on. I mean, so in all the films that I'm I'm mentioning, reviews are already up on the site, so you can check them out. Am I leaving any films out, Charles? Well, you said Ma Rainey, is, but that's on Netflix. It's not on uh, Disney Plus. No, I said, it was, I said it was on Netflix. I said Disney Plus had Soul. Amazon has both One Night in Miami as well as uh, Sylvie's Love. And I'm trying to think. Midnight Sky is also Netflix. I'm trying to think. Oh, A Promising Young Woman, I think, is on Premium Video On Demand. That's from Focus Features. And I feel like I'm missing one. Because a lot of these movies we've done, we've done reviews for so on the site. So, um, so yeah, we'll have all that coming up. So am I, am I leaving anything out, Charles? Are you frozen again? Yeah, Charles might be frozen. This is going to be a very interesting week because Charles, as a rule, is here. But he is on the road. And, you know, things happen sometimes. Sometimes we don't have the connectivity that we need. So we're waiting on a, a bunch of guests. Oh, actually, we're not. Let me take that back. We, <laughs> we booked two guests to, to be in this segment today. And I got a call early in the week from one of the, the potential guests that um, she was going to be going to New York earlier this week to do a documentary. But in case you haven't seen the weather all week, in the Northeast, we had heavy snowstorms. 
So she told me that if the snow knocked her out from doing it earlier this week, she would have to be in New York this weekend. And of course, we had weather concerns and I got a text a couple of days ago that she could not do the show today. So I said, okay, fine, I got it. We still have one other guest. And then I got a call this morning that the second guest who was gonna come on and talk about television films begged off because she was essentially exhausted. So Charles and I are going to carry the entire episode looking at our television coverage. And now Charles has issues with Wi-Fi connectivity. Now, I can actually do this because I actually have my, my 10 shows, but we will try to figure out and work through it. But it is essentially Charles and I for the next hour as a uh, brother. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm doing this is live yeah. radio man and I learned as a producer for 12 years doing radio man that even when when things look like they're going haywire you got to you got to you got to maintain your composure and just do what you do. So I was explaining to the audience Charles that we lost both our guests that were going to be on today because of the snowstorm earlier this week impacted us not having Jen Cheney from Vulture on who's now in New York this weekend. And we also lost from Adobe Radio, Shereen Nicole, who was fatigued and couldn't do it. So without any further ado, man, um, do you have your television list of movies that you want to cover? And I have my list. I'm pulling it up right now. And I think we need to go on through these because both of us have different things. Like we have some that, that are similar, but we have a couple and I think we should have some dialogue around uh, some of the some of our differences that we had in television shows this year. So, but before you begin, Charles, as I'm pulling my list up, let's set it up properly <laughs> and talk about the year that was in television, man. Um, as I say every year when we're doing the Black Real Awards, you know, every year what you're looking for is years where you have a lot of competition, where you have a lot of solid work. And this year in television is a little different because we've had a pandemic that we've all been sitting home since the month of March. So everything has been on television. So even if they're movies that have streamed, they've been on television. If they're television shows, they've been on TV. So having set it up, it's, it's kind of a year that's much different than any other year because I don't think any of us have spent this much time in any given year just sitting in front of a television watching all the stuff that we've had to watch, whether, as I said, whether it was movies, television series, limited series, whatever. So having said that, man, let me give you, tell me what your impact and how you felt about 2020, not just in the, in the shows that we're gonna talk about, but the experience of being home during a pandemic, ingesting so much of it in a single year. I think you hit the nail really right on the head, whereas uh, usually you're used to going to see a movie, you go to the theater and you can kind of compartmentalize the theater, what you're seeing as far as movies versus television. But this year has been crazy in, in that I'm seeing so much content on uh, movies on at home on my television that it really has squeezed the time where I watch any television things. So uh, it's just been a, <laughs> it's crazy this year. So um, I, I know I have watched some things, but there's a lot of stuff out there that I just haven't been able to get to just because I'm, I'm inundated with movies. And I'm sitting at home watching movies, and it's it's a different thing when you can watch a movie and at home, and you can pause and go do something, come back and start the movie back again. So you know. Well, I, yeah, I feel you, um, and I but, think that. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? Oh, I thought I. Oh, thought no, I was, I, right. I was gonna say, but I do, I do have. You said, but you do what? I do have a good list of television shows that I've been watching. Uh, actually, it was like 15 that I had to whittle down to, to the 10 for the show. So I'm ready right. to go whenever you are. All right, so here we go, man. I'm going to, to start with my list. 
And I'm just going to give them to you right now. And then over the course of the next hour, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the merits, pros and cons of each one of these. So on my list, um, and in no order in particular, but the one that I'm starting with is really my top one of the year. And I'm going to start off with HBO's Lovecraft Country. Um, so, and as I said, we will talk about it a little later on. Uh, up next is Small Acts, the BBC uh, five-part trilogy from uh, Black Real Award winner and Oscar winner Steve McQueen. Uh, next up is The Crown. Then from Disney Plus, Mandalorian. And The Crown, of course, is from Netflix. Uh, coming in, my fifth choice was, I want to say it was FX. I'm not really sure, but P Valley, <laughs> which I really yeah. want to talk a little bit about. Uh, also from Amazon on my list was The Boys, and another Amazon choice was Hunters with Al Pacino. Uh, from NBC, This Is Us, back on the list again. Finally, from CBS All Access, The Good Fight, and I'll end my, with my 10th choice from Netflix was The Queen's Gambit. Now, Charles, okay. we got you up now, so I don't know if you want to do do yours the way I did mine, where I tried to make sure I gave these networks some burn because, you know, these guys are putting out some hard work. Or if you just want to read your list, we can always talk about the networks a little later on. I, 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 can, I can read my list, and I, and I know where everything was, too, so I can also, I mean, but not surprisingly, my list is a compi comprised of a lot of the same things that's on your list. I have, I also have the boys from Amazon, uh, Lovecraft Country from HBO, Small Acts. Now, when you said Small Lovecraft Country was number one, and then you said Small Acts right behind it, but they, these are a close one and two. Oh, are, absolutely, are not, man. Uh, I mean, I, I, we'll get to that. I mean, trust me, we, 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 got a lot, we got a lot of time to chop okay. it up, but you're right. I mean, that's absolutely, that was hard, but go ahead. <laughs> Okay, um, the the Mandalorian uh, on Disney Plus. I mean, how can you go wrong with Baby Yoda and and Timothy Oliphant? I, I I no way no way to go wrong with that. I also have the Queen's Gambit like you, and this is us from NBC. Uh, and then my list seems to go in a different direction. I I have down Perry Mason, which is on HBO. Um, the Last Dance, which was on ESPN, and uh, a show on Netflix called Away, which is a, a Hillary Swank is marvelous, and uh, Upload, uh, also from Amazon. So that's my top 10. Uh, and I'll also mention I, I, put, I had Hunters at number 11 from Amazon, and Grey's Anatomy was on the list, and Dave from FX. And some, a special little series called, that's called Voices of Fire that was on Netflix were honorable mentions in, in the category. They, they're not the top 10, but they were close. All right, man. So here we go again, man. I'm, I'm laughing because by the, there's a couple of things that are going on simultaneously, man. I, as I said, I just posted a Wonder Woman review. Uh, it's getting trashed all, all across the media. <laughs> so that's number one. I'm reading the comments. Um, so people are, are, are trashing your, movies. Your, your review is getting trashed? Or the oh, no, 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 no. I, I wrote a review where I was very critical of the movie. I, you know, I try to, I try, I'm, a, I'm a glass half full guy. So even if I don't like something, I will try to find something in there that has a redeeming quality because I know that there are usually a hundred people who work on a movie, man. You know, so there's a lot of people, everybody somebody's got to feel good if the movie didn't work out. So that's happening right now. But the other thing is, I was listening to you break your movies down, and I really wanted to talk about some of these because there were some honorable mentions that I know you said you had to whittle your list down. Um, I'm trying to think that uh, there were several programs that, I, you know, All Rise was another one that I, that I thought seriously about doing something with. Um, um, what was the other one with the brother for life was another life, one yeah. that I thought had some merit, but let's, let's go back and talk about now some of these shows. And I'll start with the show that we did a, you know, we don't do a lot of special episodes 
on e either a movie or a television show. I know we did The Godfather, we did Lovecraft Country, uh, we did Jingle Jangle as a special show. So if, if you ever tune in and we are doing a, 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 a show on an episode or a film or one individual thing, that was something we both liked a lot. So in the case of Lovecraft Country, it was a 10 part uh, show that was from Misha Green. Um, this story of Tick, Letty, uh, uh, Hippolyta, uh, what, was the, what was the young girl's name uh, who was featured in uh, a later episode, but I can't, I can't remember all the names, but Lovecraft Country, for the second year in a row, HBO and these limited series that they do, you know, they, these limited series that they produce, the year before was The Watchmen with Regina King and Yahya Mateen, Abdul Mateen II and Don Johnson and all of that. But I think that this show, Lovecraft Country to me, was for me the epitome of what I want a show to be. Everything about Lovecraft Country really worked for me. I'm not really a horror guy, but it was just enough horror to keep me interested where it didn't go too far off the rails. I'm not really a sci-fi guy, but it had a nice blend of sci-fi to go along with the horror that I think that, that I thought was really executed well. I'm a guy, of course, as a black man, I am very interested in our culture. And the show did an extraordinary job of breaking down the cultural aspects of what it meant to be an African-American during the 1940s, that 1940s, 1950s period. Um, I'm, a, I'm a guy who considers himself to be a feminist, and this is a show that was held by women, uh, featured a lot of different women uh, and young girls who were doing their thing. Lovecraft Country, to me, was, was epic, and it was so good because if, if I told you, Charles, to pick, I don't know, your favorite episode of Lovecraft Country, which one would it be? Oh, wow. Uh, my point. I think, wow, that's a. I mean, I mean, I mean you, don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to answer, but I'm saying the fact that you'd have to, you literally would have to sit down and think. There is no one episode, and it's all subjective. Um, you know, I, 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 can, I remember them all. I mean, I think the one that I, I would call mind blowing was episode seven, simply called I Am Hippolyta's Journey. Woo! That was a that was a yeah. oh, hour of yeah. television. <laughs> uh, episode episode nine when they went back to uh, Tulsa, um, I, I, that that scene of Letty walking slowly down the street with the with the book of names under her arm as everything, everything is all is fire around her, just epic. Uh, episode <laughs> six, uh, I forget what it was called, but the one about the the the, the Korean woman that Tick was in love with, who had the, who had, uh, what, do you, what did you call those, the tentacles or <laughs> whatever those things were that, uh, man, that was Amazing. a great show. That was a Amazing. great show. And, that, and that's not and, even, and like, go ahead, Charles. And like you said, it, it, it's like impossible to say, oh, this show is better than, this episode is better than this episode, but because each one of them was equally powerful and, and just just amazing to watch, just to, just to see the, the colors of, of, of the uh, outfits, the, the costumes, uh, the, the set design, the stories, everything about it was excellent. I, I, I'm really impressed. I was really impressed. I think it's like you said, it's impossible to say, well, I mean, you can say you enjoyed this episode more than this one, but they, they, it's like picking tit for tat and little pieces here and there. I mean, everything was perfect about that oh, show. Oh, yeah, man. So I love that one, man. So I think we we had beaten up Lovecraft Country enough, man. I think now it's, it's on to what I call probably the most singular achievement of all 2020 in either film or television is Steve McQueen. In this small act series, my God, man. Uh, same question I would ask you again, another five-part anthology. 
Uh, I, I think I know what your favorite episode of, uh, of uh, this was. I think the final one, episode five, which was education. Charles loved education. I thought education, yes. it, 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 I thought it was really good. Um, I felt so bad for that character having to go through that. But still, I would contend that Lovers Rock, episode two, my God, you're talking about a fun night of, of television. That, that house party in 1980 London? <laughs> wow. Beautiful, beautiful. That, the was, that was amazing. The Alex, Alex Riedel, episode four, I thought was really good. The story of this man who, who we meet in prison and then his life is in flashback and we see the, the events that led him there. I, I think Steve McQueen, man, does not get enough credit. And that's why I really wanted to do this show to talk about if you haven't had an opportunity to go to Amazon Prime to check out the five part anthology, Small Acts, do yourself a favor. And as far as Charles and I, we will basically say, you're welcome. Cause you're gonna thank us after you watch it, <laughs> but you're welcome right now. Charles, what did you think about Small Acts? I love the way you introduced it as a, an achievement in uh, film and television because it's one of those things. They're films that are on television. I, he he made five films and put them on on Amazon, and Amazon deemed it as a television. Show. Who does that? Uh, who who five who has the time and the ability to do that? It's incredible. And he he didn't go out there and get. Big names. I think the biggest name is Matisha Wright from from the whole from series. Black Panther, but these right. are and he had John Boyega in uh, Red, White, and Black, Red, White, and Blue. Boyega. So, but so these the other are all. Thing, but the other thing, Charles, I mean, he I mean, got I mean, real go people to play these roles. I mean, he put, got real people to play these roles. I mean, unknown people we have never seen before in these, and 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 puts all this together. It, it's a it's amazing achievement. So, Charles, I was going to say, let me jump in and just say the other thing that what makes it to me so much more of, a, of an achievement is that he not only produced five films at, at once and dropped them all on Amazon, but they're five really distinctly different films and they're all great. There's not, I mean, honestly, and I, I mean, this is me and you talking and the rest of the audience is listening. Are there any movies in this series that you didn't like that, that, were, in the, that were in the small acts? Like, like I like not all me. of Mangrove. Like I name them in order: Mangrove, Lovers Rock, uh, Red, White, and Blue, Alex Weedle, and Education. There's not a bad movie in there, and to me, that is such a high achievement that you can do five movies at once. You can have five movies of sub such distinctly different subject matter, and you can make them all work and make and and they give you. As people would say, it gives you all the feels. That last episode, I was sitting there like, "Oh my god, yeah, that yeah. poor kid, man." When, when they when they just break down and cry at the end, man, oh man, I I'm I was crying with them. But but I mean, he co-wrote and directed all these things. It wasn't just that he just. I mean, he had his hands all in this thing. Uh, it's it's incredible. Man, I, and, and I, I'm going to leave it alone with this last comment. And when you're talking about breaking out and crying, the scene where his mother uh, asked him to, uh, to read to, to her. And he can't read. And as you said, he just starts crying uncontrollably. You're talking about an emotional punch in the gut. My God, man, Steve McQueen, you are the man. And if you're watching this, <laughs> <laughs> you you are pretty special, brother. There, there are there are filmmakers out there in the in the almost thirty years that I've been doing this that have have a career in film that can't make movies that you drop in a month. <laughs> Just drop right. these movies on the, all five of these movies in, in any given year. If Amazon had these listed as separate movies, do you realize the tug of war? Of, of how if you incorporated those into all of the other existing films that we look at for eligibility, how much difficult it would be <laughs> trying to judge the work of, of, of in these in this anthology. If this and it's, it's still going to be tough next year when we do the Black Real Awards for television, looking at it uh, on the television side, it's still going to be tough because these five films can all 
you know, they can all run up against each other. So, so yeah, good job with Steve McQueen with, with Small Axe, man. I thought it was absolutely amazing. amazing. Um, the Crown, I know you didn't have The Crown on your list. Um, I want to say it was either season four or season five of The Crown this year, this continuing story of the life of Queen Elizabeth and the family. And, and what I love about it so much is that they take and incorporate real incidents that have happened to the queen and they incorporate them into the show. And there's always a nice postscript at the end of the episode that tells you that, you know, what you just watched, you thought it was drama, but this was actually real and it's based on this. It's based on blah, blah, blah. I, I really love the show. I know, and I've got a couple of close friends that I keep telling, man, you got to check out The Crown. And they go, I ain't watching that. And I can respect that. You know, I can respect folks not watching it. Charles, Charles, you're not a crown watcher either, are you? I, I have started watching The Crown, actually, because uh, I'm a big Princess Di fan. And, they, and so this season, they are coming in with Princess Di. Yeah. So I've picked up The Crown. I start, I'm, I'm still in season one, so I haven't gotten all the way there. But it's, it's a pretty incredible show. And it's one of those ones that my wife and I are watching together. That's how incredible. Yeah, that's the testament of a good show is if the two of us can sit down together and enjoy it together, it's a good show. Great costumes, great, great uh, set design, everything about it, the, the wardrobe, everything in this thing works. But I'm going to get off of the crown because the next one that made my list, um, I, I will start by saying that as a film critic, when people hear me say this, they always look at me in shock that I never watched any movie in the Star Wars universe until they re-released them in 1997. That's the first time I'd ever seen Star Wars in any form. Right, see that look? That's what I always get. And I remember the first time I sat in a, in a theater. <laughs> wait, wait, um, wait, 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 time out, time out. <laughs> true story. You give me grief, you gave me grief oh, about, no, 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 no. about the Godfather. I'm it, late it. to the party with Star Wars, but I've watched them all, so I understand now the appeal but when I was younger Star Wars had no appeal to me I didn't didn't, didn't want to see any of my return to Jedi I wasn't, wasn't interested in any, any of it but I'm saying all that to say that I remember the first time okay. that I watched right. uh, uh, Star Wars The New Hope 1997 and I remember the first time you know you get the, the you, you see Lucasfilm and then you see the, then you see it's a chapter four the new hope, and then you get da, 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 da. you get to scroll. And I remember everybody in the theater freaking out, woo! And I was like, I don't get it. But then I did get it, right? I did get it. I say all that to say that I was always a Star Trek guy, and I was late to the Star Wars party. But watching The Mandalorian, the last four episodes of season two of The Mandalorian have upped the ante until last night when I watched the season finale, and I don't ever remember Charles screaming like a little, like a little boy. Uh, Woo! <laughs> no, no, they didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, I went crazy, and my, my lady came down and said, she was like, what is wrong? I said, man, do you, are you watching The Mandalorian? <laughs> so I thought what they did with, with the second season and last night's season finale, was absolutely genius. amazing. I love this show. <laughs> Go ahead, Charles. Go ahead. I was I was just gonna say genius. Oh genius. my god! Oh, you saw that when you saw that little <laughs> ship come flying around, and 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 that Jedi get out of there. I was like, no, no. <laughs> love the Mandalorian. Uh, I mean, watch this. You might not be able to tell. Do we like this show? Love mm. the Mandalorian. <laughs> so, I think so. I think so. Wee. Wow. So, okay. So, do we need to say anything else about the Mandalorian? John Favreau, no. No. Uh, you know, you have done an amazing job. And as, as Travis Hobson, who's a, a good friend of both of ours, who is definitely a Star Wars nerd, said that the last five minutes of the season finale 
yesterday has been better than all nine Star Wars movies. I'm like, dang. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. I mean, it's really good show. Really, really good show. And Star- you know, the, the sad thing is we lost the actor who played Boba Fett this right. week as well. So, you know, The Mandalorian is even more important as we uh, talk about it right now. All right. So, Charles, my next show, man, <laughs> is a show you haven't watched. And, you know, I remember somebody coming to me and going, you got to check this out, man. P Valley. <laughs> P Valley, created by Katori Hall, is a story of the Pink, which is a popular strip club in Mississippi where intrigue abounds when the mysterious Autumn uh, is welcomed by Mercedes. Now, Mercedes is the, is the star dancer. Autumn comes in, and, this, and the club's owner is called Uncle Clifford. Um, bruh, P Valley is, is an experience you got to have. I can sit here and tell you why P Valley is so good. Um, P Valley is something special. I mean, it, it's kind of, it's a sort of show that I don't think it's for everybody, but P Valley works quite well, man. Have you had a chance to check this thing out yet? Uh-oh, I think Carl, Charles is frozen again. Um, so... I'll ask him about P-Valley when he comes back. But P-Valley, a a set of amazing actors in this show. I was trying to look at some of the cast members that were in it. Um, But I really like the show. Nico Annan plays Uncle Clifford. Uh, Brandy Evans, of course, is Mercedes. Uh, Alarica Johnson is uh, Haley, a.k.a. Autumn. Uh, just an amazing cast of actors and a show that I'm not sure if everybody's on it yet. I'm not even sure if it's a show that Charles would even dig. It might, you don't, you don't want to be at the pink. I, I have I, down I, in the sip, watching some strippers in the club. Um, no, I'm not the way you describe it. No, but Man. I mean, I, I never even have heard of this show until you mentioned it the other day. So, you know, I'll have to check it out. I'm gonna P check Valley. it out. Look, look P Valley. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it there because you know it's P Valley. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up on my list, which I wanted to talk about, because you know we still got to talk about the the films that are different on your list, Charles. But next up on my list, of course, was two shows from Amazon, which we can kind of cobble together really quickly: The Boys and The Hunters. The Boys, of course, is is always been my ultimate dream to find out what would happen if you had people with superhero abilities who were just not good people. (laughs) You know, if Superman was just a narcissist and he was just an idiot and if Wonder Woman was bad and that's essentially what the boys is. Um, You know, so I I dig the show. I think from the concept, I think it works for me. Charles, you've got the boys on your list as well. What did you like about the boys? Well, I'm a, I'm a superhero nerd. I collect comic books and everything. So this was really kind of like the Watchmen. I have some of the books uh, the, of the boys. So, you know, uh, this was just like homecoming for me. I was just glad to see it on the screen. But I can, and I can't think of the guy's name who plays Homelander. He is so good in this role as just being uh, he's just he's just an evil prick i was waiting to see what you were going to say about homelander oh man yeah, but I, I love the show i love he's not a good guy everything about it yeah he's not a good guy he, at all the question really the question really is, who is good on the show? Because there's lots of people in there with a lot of bad intentions. And you, who there's good people on both sides, bad people on both sides. And it's, it's just a, a wonderful show and, and deliciously entertaining <laughs> and evil. <laughs> All right. So the other show that we talked about, did you have Hunters on your list, uh, which is a show about a group of, of Jews who are hunting down Nazis and the, 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 I would just put it to you like this. The cliffhanger was like, wow. <laughs> Did you watch this show? Is this on your list? I, I watched a couple episodes. I never got to the end of it. So I, uh, you know, oh, I, yeah. it, it's, it's there. 
it had when I did use your phrase delicious. It had a delicious cliffhanger. Like, <laughs> like you'd be like, wow. Again, wow means you have blown my mind with something. Wow. We went there. That's what we're doing. Um, okay. you know, I'm gonna move on because we got about another 25 minutes, and I want to make sure we have time to talk about some of the some of the different shows you have. I had This Is Us, which is a show that now in its fourth season, you know, with Sterling K. Brown, Kalichi Watson, uh, Susan Kalichi Watson, Susan. excuse me. Um, you know, along with the other fine actors, Mandy Moore and, and Milo, whose last name I, I can never pronounce, starts Vinta with a V. Vinta McGlee, uh, never mind, never yeah, mind. I'm gonna let you handle that one. <laughs> uh, these guys do an amazing job, but uh, you know, the subject matter this year when they came back from the pandemic and you know, all, excuse me, all the racial unrest and, you know, this one episode where, you know, we find out, of course, that Randall being black and his brothers and sisters being white and how his sister comes to apologize to him. And, you know, he's trying to explain to her that, you know, what's going on now has gone on my whole life. You never noticed it. So I'm saying the writers, including Kale Yagan, who we had on the show uh, a couple of months ago, they get it, man. And, and This Is Us is a show that continues to resonate for me. And I had actually had to put it on my list. Uh, the last two that I had on my list, of course, were The Good Fight, which is a spinoff of The Good Wife, uh, where a, a white attorney leaves a prestigious law firm and has now joined an all-black law firm led by Delroy Lindo, who just won Best Actor at the New York Film Critics Circle yesterday, or Critics Circle yesterday. Uh, Delroy Lindo is a fine actor. Um, uh, you know, super, super amazing show that does a really good job, Charles, of looking at current events and weaving them into the show. So if you, if you have not had an opportunity to see The Good Fight, I would suggest checking it out. And the last show on my list, man, how can you take uh, chess and make it sexy? Easy. The Queen's Gambit. Anya Taylor-Joy. Um, the Queen's Gambit. If, if you didn't like that, I mean, if you didn't watch that show, that final episode of The Queen's Gambit, they built it up, built it up, built it up. And when they got to that last episode, he just dropped the mic. And the final scene, I thought, was gangster. Yeah. You know, let's play. You know, <laughs> let's play. That, no, so, no, that's all it came down to. Let's do it. Right. Uh, so, you know, even and the and the character that, that I loved the most was uh, I think it was Jolene was her name, the the foul mouth uh friend of hers who she met in the foster home, who literally is the spark that helps her revival in the in, you know in episode six and seven. Love, love that show, man. So that's my list of my top ten. Charles, talk to me about some of the ones that you have that were different from that we didn't share and, and elaborate on why they made your list. Well, um, the first one that we don't share for me was a, a show called Away on Netflix where uh, Hillary Swank plays a woman who's on a mission to Mars. She's got to leave behind her friend, family and friends and children and everything to go off on this mission. And of course, going to Mars is not going to be an easy thing to do. So uh, it, it's a really good dra drama about uh, not just about going to Mars and the whole space thing, but it's about family relationships and, and how, how do you keep those things going and long, with a, <laughs> the definition of a long distance relationship it finds new meaning with this one because we're talking about another planet. So I, I really love the show. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, Netflix has decided they're not picking it up for its se second season. And there's been this uh, swell of, of requests for it to be renewed. So who, who knows, it may get another season. But if it's really entertaining, very, it, it, it does what shows like the movies like the midnight sky it succeeds in the areas where they failed and that making it uh relatable to the audience and so i really enjoy that show and hillary swank is doing some good work because she's also got a great movie coming out that you that i know you want to talk about if you haven't already so uh she's the that, she's a that's, the, that's a that's a future show 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she she's a real hot right now, and I mean that in all the uh, all the senses that you can think of when I say that she's really hot. Well, you know, it's um, funny. I, I started off, Charles, watching this show, and I think I got maybe four episodes deep, and it did not hold my attention. So I'm not saying that it's a bad show, but, you, you know, we've been inundated with so much stuff. And for me, I'm a binge watcher, man. So, like, if I'm really into your show, I'm going to just – Start from the beginning and then like on a on a lazy afternoon I'm going go all the way to the end and for whatever reason it didn't hold my attention and I started it in a place where I couldn't finish it so I trust you that I, I think I understand the concept and the idea if you put it on your list it must have really struck a chord with you so away which is a Netflix show you're saying they're not trying to pick it up for season two they, they are not trying to pick it up for season two mm, but sorry they, to hear that man that happens. That happens sometimes. Good, good shows die. Um, Perry Mason. Oh, uh, yeah. Another one I started with. Go ahead. Uh, how did you not complete Perry Mason? Well, I, I know the difference is Perry Mason on HBO, you couldn't binge because they did that once a week thing, kind of like they did with Lovecraft. So you had to kind of schedule to make sure that you watched it. But um, this was a, a throwback to the old noir like Humphrey Bogart type stuff that you would, that, or, or even Chinatown for even more recent. Uh, very well done. Matthew Rise is excellent as the the up and coming Perry Mason, not the lawyer that we used to see on television, but the, the private investigator who worked up to becoming the lawyer that we saw on television. He is dynamite. I enjoy the show a lot. I, it just, I, I love that noir feel to it that it has. No, no, um, I got you, man. I, I, you're right. I started off, and, you, and for the reasons you just named, you just heard me say that I like to look at my shows where I can kind of look at them continuously. And if I got to wait from week to week, like <laughs> Lovecraft, I did it for Lovecraft, because Lovecraft and The Mandalorian, there's certain shows. So if you look at my list and you see the shows that weren't like they didn't drop an entire episode on, you had to commit to them. That was a commitment I made to make sure I saw The Mandalorian, a commitment I made to see Lovecraft Country. I wasn't making a commitment to go see Perry Mason. Uh, you know, not to say it was bad. It just, it just didn't hit it for me. So well, you, For me, it also was because I grew up watching Perry Mason with my, with my mom. And, we, and so it was really cool to see this new iteration of him for, for right, me. Right. For me, I, it really got me invested. Um, the Last Dance, or the, uh, the story of the Chicago Bulls. Wow, and, uh, I forgot and, that one. That's a good one. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and the great thing about it for me was I lived through the time of the Bulls era and knew everything about Michael Jordan, and I, at least I thought I did. And so when uh, I'm watching The Last Dance, I'm, I'm finding out, I was finding out a lot of things that I didn't know before about Michael Jordan and, and his last run for his last, his sixth ring or his, his last ring. So uh, a great show, great uh, documentary. I, and I don't usually do a lot of documentaries, but this one was, it, it, it was right in my alley. It was sports. Is Michael Jordan. I mean, he, he, he ended up being a Washington Wizard for a, a couple seasons. So, you know, hey, I'll, I'll rep my city. <laughs> you got to say. <laughs> of course, when he was playing for Chicago, he was – I respected him as a player, but I hated him because he kept beating up my teams. But, you know, that, that's how it is. And, but The Last Dance was very well put together documentary. Uh, ESPN knocked it out of the park with this one. And I think a lot of people turned in, tuned in to see that show. You know, hey, man, I can't argue with you, man. I, I didn't see it all in its totality uh, initially, but when I finally did get an opportunity to see it, um, I, it was 25, almost 30 years ago. So I remember the run that Chicago had, man. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that the last dance touched on a little, a little bit, but man, Jordan just didn't come into the league and the bulls won immediately, man. You know, that was back during the eighties when it was the Lakers, the Celtics. And then later on, I think <laughs> Philly won a title once. And then it was Detroit that had a run. And Jordan comes along, and he's got to get past Boston. 
And then later on, he has to get past Detroit. And finally, when he gets past both of them, the Lakers are waiting for him. So when he finally won his first ring, man, he was, what, seven or eight years in the league? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it man. Was. So it wasn't, it wasn't instantaneous. And that's what makes, to me, the last dance so compelling because, you know, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas and so many other rivals and contemporaries, contemporaries, excuse me, of Jordan were there. And I remember, you know, we are at an age, Charles, where we remembered watching that stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, it was a very different league than the league that exists right now. And I think Jordan had the hindsight to have them record all that stuff in his last year. And they went back and found all that other footage. Fascinating, you, you know, so again, I can't, I'm not mad at you. I think that's a really solid, good choice that you have on your list. And you heard me as soon as you said it, I went, oh man, I forgot that one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man, how'd that sneak by? Well, hey, so it happens, it happens. I know, that's why we, that's why two of us, you know, we put our heads together, man. We, you know, we, we are one really good critic together. <laughs> <laughs> So what else? What other? Are those the only ones that you had that were uh, that were different from mine? I got one more. A, okay, go little, for it. An interesting little show called Upload from Amazon. Oh yeah, I'd have to get that one. Now, now that was good. But go ahead, I'm gonna listen to you, and then I'll chime in. Well, you know, being Pastor Chuck, uh, I I love the theological implications of uh, of a world where you can upload your consciousness into the internet instead of dying, and people are considering that going into these places is heaven uh, or whatever the, the great beyond. Uh, it was it's a really interesting show in. Uh, addressing those theological issues, but also d discussing the science behind all of it. And it had a little mystery uh, wrapped into it of R Robbie Amell's character. Was he, did he die or was he killed? Who did it? How did it happen? All that stuff. So it was, it was a, it's a really cute show. It's a really cute show. And, and he falls in love with his angel, angel, the, the person in the real world who advises him on how to adjust to life on, in the great beyond. It's, it's a really, a really, really fun show. Really fun show. Well, you know, two things. One, I did watch this show and I binged it. And I, I thought that the concept was really, really solid because again, I'm a concept guy, Charles. Like you, you know, we, we watch so much stuff done that looks so similar to one another that sometimes, you know, when you, when you give me a concept that's just a little different, it could be a takeoff of a thing. It mm -hmm. reminded me a little bit of a kind of a series version of, if you remember the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, right? It was right. sort of in that vein when you start talking about consciousness being transferred and things of this nature. So I really thought it was a good show. And it's funny. You talk about the, the theological aspect. I'm surprised a show like God Friended Me is a show that you and I haven't talked about because I watched that on CBS religiously about a, an atheist who is a, 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 a podcaster who gets a friend request from God and the whole series is about how God keeps putting people in his path for him to help. His father is a, is a, a bishop in a Catholic or Episcopalian order in New York and, you know, he doesn't believe they've got conflict there. His sister is gay. So, I mean, <laughs> the guy who, I forget the name of the showrunner who wrote it, but it's the same guy, I think, that does The Flash. Greg, is yeah. it Greg Berlanti? Greg Berlanti. Berlanti. So, yeah. I'm surprised you and I have never had a conversation or even thought, like, uh, thought about putting it on this list. God friended me because it's a show that I watch as a believer that is a show I kind of watch and go, okay, yeah, that is a, an example of, you know, how God works sometimes, you know, like you get a friend request and you go and help somebody. And then I love how sometimes he'll help one person who ends up helping somebody else that he needs help with in future episodes. You're nodding your head. So clearly it's a show you watch. You didn't <laughs> think this is one of the 10 best shows of 2020? God friended me. 
It, it, it kind of slipped past me. Uh, I, ah, so you forgot, <laughs> huh? See, I told you, you put two of us together. We won really good critic. The sad <laughs> thing about the show is that it's been canceled. It's not coming back Has anymore. It really? Yeah, it is. Uh, Javisha Leslie, who played the sister, is now Batwoman on the CW. So, you know, uh, it, it was a great show on CBS. And, I, uh, yeah, must watch TV for me because I just love the whole – it was like Touched by an Angel in, in modern – in our time now. And so it, it was it, – with the internet in, involved and everything, I thought it was a great show, but it just – it, it didn't make it for another a third season. It made two wow. seasons. I, I did not I did not realize that it was canceled. But again, man, like I said, there's so much television out there, man. And the fact, as I said, man, you know, I, the Lovecraft, small acts that we talked about, um, you know, some of the other Queens Gambit. Those three, those three to me, I think really stand out as like superb examples of how you can take a subject matter and use it. Do you have three that stand out for you that aren't the three that I just named? Um, three, uh, well, like I said, I, I really loved Upload, how their concept was uh, just unique to me. And you mentioned the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, and, and it, it really didn't click with me, but I, I do see the similarities now that you mentioned it. But for me, I, I love that show. I think that what they've done with it was great. Um, one of my honorable mentions uh, was a show called Voices of Fire, which is uh, kind of like an intersection of gospel music and the voice, you know, or, or American Idol, if you want to say, where they were auditioning to make this choir from uh, and from the Norfolk, Virginia area. So it, it's a really, really great show because there's lots of stories about and testimonies that, that go along with the singers. Mm -hmm. that, that's very, very good. I enjoyed the show a lot uh, uh, until the finale when they got to the last episode. Uh, it was just a whole different thing. So, but it's a great, it's a great watch as well. I, I really enjoyed that show, Voices of Fire. I wanted, I, I tried to sneak it in, but I, I, who was I going to take out? This Is Us? No, I couldn't take This Is Us out. Um, right. uh, the Queen's Gambit, uh, there's, there's lots of good television out there. And it's, and with all the movies, I, I, I'm amazed that I have time to even look at anything, but there's some really great stuff out there. Well, I got, we got about seven minutes to go, man. I got a couple of honorable mentions and both of them are from Netflix, right? Well, actually, that's not true. I got a third one that's from CBS All Access, but I'll talk about the two from Netflix first. And both, I think, have something to do with Ryan Murphy, who recently did the prom for Netflix. But he had a series called Ratcheted, which was about Nurse Ratchet, uh, a spinoff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that starred, uh, what is my girl's, Sarah Paulson. This series, which kind of looked at the, the, the one flew under the cuckoo's nest phenomenon from her point of view, uh, was took place in the 1940s. I love the costuming, the story. Um, I like a, a lot about it, but it didn't make my list. But man, it was such a fun, fun, creepy show to watch. <laughs> um, the other show that Ryan Murphy did, which was a limited series, was called Hollywood, which kind of yeah. reimagined the golden age or around that period of 1939, 1940s, where you had African Americans uh, and, and, and folks who were LGBTQ who had a much more prominent role, including the fact that uh, one of the actresses on the show, and I forget the, the sister's name, she was in um, Black Klansman opposite um, uh, uh, Denzel's son, opposite uh, John David Washington. Uh, Laura Harrier was her name, yeah. who plays an actress who literally wins an Academy Award in 1940, 1939, which made me think, Man, if life really had worked the way it worked on Hollywood, we'd be in a much different place with representation, you know, 60, 70, 80 years later. So, you know, kudos to Ryan Murphy. That's what television is. Television is supposed to give us ideas or movies or imagery is supposed to give us ideas. A lot of people, Charles, talk about uh, part of the reason why it became palatable for Barack Obama 
back in 2008 is because if you watch 24 with Dennis Haysbert as a president, people will, people love the show and the idea of a black dude didn't necessarily scare everybody. So right. I totally get it. So we had those two shows. And my final one is a show that's on CBS All Access called Star Trek Discovery. Ugh. And what I love about Star Trek Discovery, as I told you earlier when we talked about the Star Wars piece, is that this is another show that's kind of a spinoff in this kind of reality, this universe that is Star Trek. And, you know, normally Star Trek shows and their, and their spinoffs are always centered on, on a ship and a captain, right? So it's always about who's the captain of a ship. But the genius of Discovery is that it's told from the, the point of view of one of the the the, the ship. The, what do you? How would you describe she's her? The first officer. She's like the first officer, but it's a sister. Yeah. And and in the show, she's not just a sister, but she's half Vulcan. So you get like the Spock storylines. You get her point of view. I think it's just genius. And. A lot of those shows I never watched. I mean, I like Avery Brooks when they, we did, I forget the name of the Star Trek. Deep Space office. Nine. Thank you, Deep Space Nine. We had the sister Karen, uh, what was her name? Kathy Mulgrew. Uh, which one was that? Voyager. See, see, see I, I, got a, I got a Trekkie. See, see, <laughs> you chose those. So I, I, a lot of those, Deep Space Nine I watched because of Avery Brooks. But I love Discovery, man, because I'm like, they, they're doing one off of a first officer that's a sister? And then she's a fantastic actress. Um, yeah, she, what, is, uh, what is her name? Because I want to give her some shine on the show. Um, I'm going to pull it up right now. Star was, Trek. Go ahead. Straight off, of, straight off of her work off of the on The Walking Dead, she gets signed to this show. And she just is phenomenal. I, I, I'm, I don't know. Well, I haven't watched the the latest season of Star Trek Discovery, but oh it's, yeah, and, it's and a she great and she show. is a real sister, Sonequa Martin Green, married to a brother. Uh, I forget the brother's name. She is from Russellville, Alabama. <laughs> that's a, that's a that's a black woman right there. That's, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. man. She, so Sonequa Sonequa Martin Green is the star of Star Trek Discovery. Love that show. Didn't make my top 10, but it's a really good show. You got any, did, did you finish with all of your, um, your yeah, honorable I'm, mentions? Yeah, I got all mine. In. Well, I didn't mention Grey's Anatomy like I wanted to because uh, they, they're doing a really great storyline with the, with the COVID and, and I don't know if they're wrapping up the show or not, but Meredith is me. Uh, one of the reasons I left this watching the show was because they killed off Derek Shepard and now Derek Shepard is back. Um, so it, it's a really interesting, uh, season this so far. So we'll see where it goes, but right now I'm, I'm back watching Grey's Anatomy. All right, Charles. So we got about a minute and a half to go one more time on the way out the door, just without the networks, just read the 10 films or the 10 films, the 10 television shows that made your top 10 shows of 2020. All right. So we start off with, um, well, what did we start off with? Uh, the boys, then Lovecraft Country, Small Axe Series, The Mandalorian, The Queen's Gambit, I also had, um, Away, This Is Us, Perry Mason, The Last Dance, and Upload. All right, and for me, I simply went Lovecraft Country, Small Axe, The Crown, The Mandalorian, P Valley, The Boys, Hunters, This Is Us, The Good Fight, and Queen's Gambit. So there you go, Charles. Uh, we'll post this. This will be live on uh, our YouTube channel. It'll be on thefilmgordon.com as well as on Spreaker. Uh, I invite you guys to subscribe to all of those and to the 250 people who downloaded episodes yesterday. We love you. Keep it going, man. Tell a friend. Tell, Tell a friend. friend what we're doing here at the Film Gordon dot com as well as keeping it real with film gordon subscribe either to the film gordon.com to the youtube the film gordon youtube channel or to us at spreaker.com um as we tell you always and i will amend it a little bit uh please see something good on television <laughs> this week we've given you a lot of options until next time we will see you guys on the other side happy holidays charles you got anything for him on the way out 
Merry Christmas from Blanta. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, we'll see you guys. You guys take care and enjoy.